probably all of you, when you think uh, in Brazilian terms or have the sort of image of Brazil, we, we always think about freedom, we always think about uh, multiculturalism, we always think about um, freedom of expression in the sense of even religious terms, no? Um, Brazil has historically built up this idea that it's a, uh, it's a, it's a meeting point of cultures with lots of um, um, African influences with European and uh, uh, indigenous, um, Amerindians, indigenous in the origins too, but normally this construction tends to, to forget or tends to not to neglect uh, the conflictual construction of this, this society and also to hide some problems that I would like to discuss and bring more for, for us today here. Um, and this, those problems are related exactly to, to religious issues and the connection that it has to, to ethnic um, equality in the country too. I would be uh, exploring more deeply uh, the issues related to Afro-Brazilian religions in Brazil and their role in the construction of this image or construction of uh, what is Brazilian culture, um, but also how they've been segregated and currently and historically victims of violence um, and repression, either by the state, either by other actors that are not so um, keen to connect it with, uh, with this idea of an Afro-Brazilian reference. No? Um, probably you don't know, but Brazil was the last country in the Western Hemisphere to abolish slavery that happened only in 1888 in Brazil. And that didn't mean, of course, that uh, Afro-Brazilians and Africans that were enslaved in Brazil, they were uh, integrated into the Brazilian society as uh, equal citizens. The history of segregation, the history of racism in Brazil, um, is, is violent as in many other countries in the world. And what is paradoxical is that all along the 20th century, Brazil tried to depict its uh, idea or its identity globally uh, using these elements of Afro-African cultures as important. So the Brazilian music, the Brazilian samba, the capoeira, all those elements that we are familiar with that have African origins and the Brazilians praise as important come from this uh, Afro history in Brazil come from those who were enslaved and those that in the 20th century, as I mentioned, were also being victim of this racism and more, more serious than that, violence and violation of, the, of their human rights. One of those aspects, <coughs> I'm sorry for coughing, but I'm recovering from COVID and that's one of the reminiscence <laughs> that it's left for a couple of days still. But one of those expressions of um, Afro-Brazilian culture is related to religion, um, mainly to, to groups or let's say to, to religion movements that are um, Afro-Brazilians. And I'm talking about Candomblé and Umbanda. Candomblé more specifically quite, uh, quite connected to, to Yoruba cultures um, in, in Africa, uh, while Umbanda a more syncretic uh, religion connected with, of course, Roman Catholicism, but also uh, spiritualism from France from the 19th century, quite a positivistic religion, and also Bantu and uh, Nago uh, expressions from Africa. Those religions movements, they were never in the core of representation of Brazilian society, but they are there. They are a religious expressions of these Afro-descendant communities. Those religions are their important elements of the expression of the faith uh, of most of those people that, as I said, historically have been neglected. Those religions and their spaces of practice have been also spaces of resistance and spaces of demonstration um, of reactions and protest in favor of the human rights of everyone and specifically and especially of the Afro-Brazilians. Well, curiously, when, they, when they, uh, the abolition of the slavery in Brazil, and especially with the Republic Constitution, Brazilian Republic started one year after the abolition of slavery in 1889. So the first constitution of the Republic uh, allowed freedom of religion in the country. However, Afro-Brazilian religions and the practices of the, the Afro-descendants were considering, uh, considered like um, things of the evil and persecuted by the police. So for many, many, many years, anyone who practiced Afro-Brazilian religions, and especially the leaders, um, the, they, were, uh, they were arrested, uh, kept in prisons, and their spaces of worship were uh, destroyed 
mainly. This thing's just about 1941, when uh, the change in the constitution also said that they, they should not be persecuted like that. Again, let's not take that as a, oh, the change the law. So from that moment on, the freedom was there. Those things are not so simple like that. The prejudice against Afro-Brazilians and the prejudice against their religion uh, were and are constantly still in Brazilian society. Even after years and years of many uh, positive actions in order to, to assure the same respect that uh, those religions have, have the same level of respect that Afro, uh, that, that uh, Roman Catholicism, that uh, uh, evangelical church and other, uh, other expressions of religions have in Brazil, they have been in the space of the prejudice and space of segregation, not treat as serious as one would treat, for instance, one, one church uh, of the, the, the Roman Catholic, for instance. <coughs> well, um, in recent years, things have been more serious indeed. From 2015 to 2019, um, there was about 2,700 uh, reports of religious intolerance uh, against Afro-Brazilians in Brazil, uh, against those that practice Candomblé and Umbanda. This has been connected uh, much with the development of another sort of religious movement in Brazil, neo-Pentecostalism. Uh, church that, uh, that Christian church for neo-Pentecostal inspiration that demonized uh, the Afro-Brazilian religions. So in the construction of their, um, their model of um, understanding and reading the world, um, everything practiced in Candomblé and Umbanda are practice of the devil. Uh, consequently, some radicals uh, members of those neo-Pentecostal movements uh, actually perpetrate attacks to, to spaces of worship, places of worship of Candomblé and Umbanda, uh, most of the time provoking uh, violence, provoking fear. And then we have a third element that I would add to also start to arrive to the conclusion of my, of my short talk here. Um, in some uh, Brazilian neighborhoods, especially in the favelas that you probably have heard about the slums in Rio, Sao Paulo, Salvador, or other big cities in Brazil. Uh, paradoxically, many drug dealers, many drug uh, uh, leaders uh, of drug gangs in those favelas converted into neo-Pentecostal churches, evangelical neo-Pentecostal churches, and decided to take in action uh, most of what was only uh, hate speech, and they start to really forbid in their areas the presence and the exercise of the freedom of religion of Afro-Brazilians. So in the last three years, and mostly in 2020, we have a lot of acts of violence uh, committed by drug traffickers, converted into, uh, into some neo-Pentecostal movements, uh, expelling, ex exposing people from their neighborhoods because they practice Afro-Brazilian religions. Uh, last year, a reporter in, 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 um, in Rio de Janeiro, in one neighborhood of Rio de Janeiro, interviewing some members of Afro-Brazilian religions, Umbanda specifically, um, the, 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 the person who was interviewed said, we cannot use white clothes anymore in the streets because we can be victim of violence. Most of the practitioners of uh, Candomblé and Umbanda, they dress in white, uh, as, a, uh, as part of their liturgical or even uh, uh, rituals uh, practices in everyday life. So we start to see that um, the violation against, again, Afro-Brazilians um, expressions of faith historically being repeated. And we are talking about that in 2021. Now we are talking about that more than 100 uh, years of the, the, the end of slavery in Brazil. but. And it's not official anymore. It's not the state doing this persecution anymore or this violence anymore, but members of Brazilian society that are continuously. And that's not only against one religion. We, may, we must remember that. That's a reflection of the same way that Afro descendants are treated in Brazil. So we, it's not only a question of religion here, but it's a question of ethnicity too. It's a question of um, uh, self identity also. And yes, that's a, again, as I said, it's paradoxical and probably many Brazilians that will be listening to me talk to that uh, will think, oh no, you are exaggerating, but it's not. No, there is this mythology 
of, uh, of uh, racial democracy in Brazil that start to be built up back on the 1930s. And there's still people that repeat, oh yeah, Brazil is a racial democracy. There is no, uh, no segregation. There is no racism in Brazil. But yes, it's present in this society and this violence that Afro-Brazilians uh, religions have been victim um, historically. And also in recent years, it's a reality, it's present, it's still there. And that's something that we should not silence about. And that's something that we should um, bring and make it more public and discuss as we are doing here today. So thank you very much again for your attention and patience to listen to me. Mm -hmm.